Hello friends, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Poonam Chavla, an assistant professor with Maharaja Agrasen Institute of Management Studies in Rohini. Today, we are going to discuss on the interesting topic of systematic approach to training and development. After completion of this module, the students will be able to understand the role of training and development and its five main phases. Identify the advantages of systematic approach to training and development. Role of training and development, the right mix of knowledge, skills and attitudes, proper selection to learn in order to bridge the performance gap, promotion of organizational objectives. The systematic approach to training and its main phase systematic approach to training is a methodology for arranging training programs. It ensures that people are prepared for their work by having the necessary knowledge, skills and attitudes to do their job. It begins with identifying people's work related needs. Utilizing systematic approach to training. Utilizing a systematic approach to training is beneficial as it prioritizes an organization's objectives and goals prior to initiated phase of training. A systematic approach to training is a type of formal training designed to ensure training begins and ends with the organizational needs. This approach equips employees with the knowledge and skills to perform job with competency. The SAT is a methodology for managing training programs. It is an orderly, logical approach to determine what people should know and do at a particular job. The systematic approach to training ensures that people are prepared for their work by having the necessary knowledge, skills and attitudes to do their jobs. SAT highlights identification of needs. SAT begins with identifying people's work related needs. It ensures training is delivered properly. The employees learns what is important and ensures that the employee is now competent for the job to be assigned. Combined effort. SAT is always a combined effort between trainers and experts from operating line organizations. Managers, supervisors and experienced workers from organizations play an important role in the implementation of the systematic approach to training. Trainers provide expertise in the systematic approach to training process and methodology. They apply the systematic approach to training to meet the needs of the organization. They identify the work that will be done and the standards against which employees will be judged. Experts from operating groups provide the expectation and work requirements of the group. Assurance The systematic approach to training ensures that training program supports the organization's need for human performance. It ensures people are prepared and capable to do their jobs. The five main phases in the systematic approach to training are analysis, design, development, implementation and evaluation. It is shown in the pictorial representation in this slide. Step 1 Analysis the various elements of analysis are number one, determination of training needs, analysis of training needs, making sure that training is required, task and elements required for training, role of operating line managers and identification of knowledge and skills. First, determination of training needs. 
The first phase includes determination of training needs through analysis of employee performance and behavior and comparison of organizational goals. Inputs from supervisory staff is critical to efforts to identify needs. It may sometimes be difficult to distinguish between training requirements and other issues that lead to problems. Once training needs are established, the next phase can be initiated. Analysis of training needs. The first phase in SAT is analysis. The first questions that must be asked, is there a need for training? Managers sometimes will attempt to correct a human performance problem caused by inadequate procedure or faulty equipment by training the people. Trainers sometimes attempt to use training to correct problems even though training will not solve the issue because they want to help. Make sure that training is required and needed. Then analyze to determine what training should do. In the analysis phase, the duties of a job are identified. The tasks that must be done to accomplish the duties are analyzed. Task and elements. Often, we must find tasks that are so large that we must break them into smaller parts so that we can call them task elements. From the task and elements, we determine the knowledge, skill and attitude needed to successfully perform the task. Tasks are, are reviewed and characterized by difficulty, importance and frequency to help determine whether training is required prior to performing the task or not. Role of Operating Line Managers the involvement of operating line managers is important to the analysis process. Trainers should not be expected to know everything about a job. They are not expected to set the performance standards for the operating group. This is the responsibility of the operating group. The operating group should provide the standards and their expectations for performance to the trainers during the analysis phase. Identification of knowledge and skills. During the analysis phase, trainers will attempt to identify the knowledge and skills of trainees. This will allow the course to be designed to meet their learning needs. If students for laborers with little education, a maths course may be necessary to learn to read instruments. If students were engineers, the maths course is probably not necessary. The outcome of the analysis phase is a task analysis that lists the tasks that are performed to accomplish the duties of a position and the knowledge, skills and attitudes necessary to perform the task. Step 2. Design. It involves basic design, design phase activities, learning objectives, no surprises to the trainees, the instructional technology and the media to be used. Basic design. In the design stage, input gathered during the analysis stage is used to create learning objectives, stipulate instructional methods, identify training material to be used and specify the location at which training will take place. It will produce end of course evaluations of course content and examine students competency. Design phase activities. The design phase is really a decision making phase. In the design phase, we complete three important activities. We decide what the students will learn in the class and how that learning will transfer to the job. From this activity, we write student learning objectives. Second, 
we decide what will be taught and the instructional method to be used to teach. Third, we decide how the students will demonstrate competency to do the required work and develop an examination plan to test the student's competency. Learning objectives. Now, learning objectives can be broken down into two types. The first is terminal objectives, which explain what the students must be able to do after training on the job. Second, specific learning objectives, sometimes also called as the enabling objectives, tell what knowledge, skill and attitudes must be displayed during class. They are written in words so that the student can understand. No surprises for the trainees. There should be no surprises for students or trainees or instructors or supervisors. Students are given the learning objectives at the beginning of the class so that they know exactly what is expected of them. The learning objectives are based upon the result of the analysis phase. The student examinations are based upon the learning objectives. The instructional technology and the media to be used. The design phase also determines what will be taught and how it will be taught. In this phase, we select the instructional technology and the media to be used. The instructional technology usually includes combination of the following hands-on practice, lectures, overhead transparencies, videotapes, training equipment, computer training, pictures, models, student reading, self-study or on-the-job training. It is important to decide how the students will practice the skill to be learned. During the design phase, the trainer researches existing training material to determine if material already exists to teach these learning objectives. If material is not available, the trainer considers whether to develop new material or to purchase material from an outside supplier. Using the learning objectives as the standard, the trainer develops an examination plan to determine if the student is competent concerning the course material. This plan states the learning objective to be tested and the number of questions relating to each learning objective. We determine the type of question and the extent of difficulty of the questions. An examination table of specifications is written to guide the actual writing of questions in the development phase. Managers from the operating group normally approve the design before the development phase begins. This ensures that the nuclear plant's needs are being met by the course. The development phase is used primarily for producing or acquiring materials required for the upcoming training. This stage can be compared to producing a recording of a song from a page of sheet of music, handouts, tests and evaluations are printed, slides are assembled and the use of multimedia tools is arranged. In the development phase, the training design is made into training material. Training material for instructors and students are written or purchased. These materials could include lesson plans, student handouts, videotapes, training aids and other material. Examination questions are written as required in the examination table of specification from the design phase. Questions are assembled into student exams as required. The implementation phase can be considered as the climax of strategic approach to training. It is the culmination of all the previous steps. The actual training is conducted for your staff. 
This is the component that integrates the research and data from the analysis phase and in which your employees use learning tools and materials that emerge from the design and development stage. In the implementation phase, the instructor teaches and the student learns. Although this is the phase that most people think is training, it is the easiest phase to perform. The material written down during the development phase is used to implement the decisions that we made in the design phase. We also apply the information learned about the job in the analysis phase during implementation. At the completion of the course, the students prove their competency by passing the course examination, which talks about evaluation. Evaluation is conducted throughout the process. The effectiveness of each step is continually assessed. An overarching evaluation of the entire approach measures the value of the training program as it applies to company goals and employee performance and behavior. Evaluation can be completed by testing knowledge and skills immediately after completion of training or through consultation with employees and supervisors after work has resumed. Evaluation is usually listed last. However, evaluation is done throughout the SAT process. Evaluation is all about asking how are we doing? During the other three phases, trainers do an evaluation to ensure the process is working correctly and to identify improvements immediately. Once the training is complete, trainers evaluate the effectiveness of the training and determine if the student is performing on the job as expected. They determine if the training course was useful to the organizational performance. Trainers identify what else is required to improve performance and determine if the course could have been done better? Identifying improvements for the course and improvements for the entire training process is an important part of the evaluation process of SAT. The best evaluation of training effectiveness is done on the job. We ask students and their supervisors if they are properly prepared to do their job. We also use plant performance monitoring programs to evaluate the effectiveness of training and determine areas for improvement. Operating line managers must be involved in the evaluation of training for it to be most effective. This slide talks about the advantages of systematic approach to training and development which can be listed as it is an organized approach, it gives clarity and responsibility, it recognizes the needs of the student, it recognizes the ability of the student and it is a hands-on design. Number 1. Organized approach. Every aspect of SAT focuses on organization and maximizing returns on employee education. Generally speaking, the SAT breaks down into different phases. Each of these phases facilitates information flow and promotes understanding. That organization makes it so people from diverse backgrounds and perspectives are able to reach similar understandings. This ultimately reduces overall confusion for both the instructors and the training students. Clarity and Responsibility With the transparency of information brought on by SAT's organization comes a better understanding of where the responsibility falls. If an employee fails at an aspect of their job, they and their superior can refer back to their training. Was the appropriate task covered in training? This should be evident in training syllabi. If it was, then fault falls on the employee. If it wasn't, then fault falls on the instructor and the training administrator. Fortunately, properly executed SAT is transparent and logical 
and will likely never put the instructor at fault. Recognizing the student's needs. Although SAT may seem rigid through its organization, it's designed to be flexible and adaptive to a student's and future employee's needs. Through the implementation and evaluation process, an instructor will get to know what a student needs to get out of the training program and out of their position. In this analysis, it may learn about their educational preferences or special needs. The program and individual education may then be reshaped or restructured if it is appropriate and not obstructive overall. Recognizing the student's abilities. Likewise, the SAT process will allow an instructor to recognize where individual students excel. During the design phase, an instructor should articulate how a student should be evaluated. During implementation, this may evolve as the instructor recognizes and brings out a student's strength. By recognizing these strengths, an employee will gain confidence in their ability to do their job and ultimately do it better. It is through SAT that an instructor can feel out which areas need encouragement and which are fine as they are currently. Hands-on design. Each and every organization has different protocols, expectations and jobs to fulfill. The SAT is successful because it recognizes this and offers high company input within its strict structure. Experts in a company will know which knowledge and skills must be communicated through the training process. Trainers, the one who work hands-on with the others or potential employees, fit these requirements into a program that best works for them and the organization. This process is multifaceted, yet simple, which ultimately allows for little or no communication mistakes. Summary to the module. Utilizing a systematic approach to training is beneficial because it prioritizes an organization's objectives and goals. It equips personnel with the knowledge and tools to pursue the organization's interest with competent job performance. Training is most effective when it is planned, implemented and evaluated in a systematic way. Unplanned, uncoordinated and haphazard training efforts greatly reduce the learning process. Thank you. I hope you understood the module well.